What we're experiencing is not inflation. It's not demand pull inflation. It's not that we have excess demand and limited supply. It's we devalued the currency. Big news today, of course, obviously the markets are responding quite interestingly. Uh, ETH is on fly. We've got Bitcoin of correct and kind of in a little bit of a correction mode right now with the price or with inflation moving at this pace, because I think a lot of people did anticipate that we would see a softening of inflation uh, from the 9.1 and where we are right now at 8.5. First of all, what is your opinion of how this will affect markets in the short period of time? Do you think we're in for a, a little bit of a run here or do you think it's going to be short lived? Uh, look, I think we're in a, a summer doldrums, short covering kind of market. Um, you know, what's interesting about about bull markets and bear markets, you know, there's never been, Paul, in, in all the time we've we've had markets, there's never been a 4% up day in a bull market. Right. That doesn't happen, right? Because a bull market is a market that goes up most days, a little bit, but goes down sharply on bad news or perceived bad news. A bear market, conversely, goes down most days and then goes up sharply on good news or perceived good news. So a couple weeks ago, we had a 4% up day in, in NASDAQ. Why? Well, because Microsoft came in, missed revenues, missed earnings, but said, oh, you know, I know we only grew 3% you know, qu this, this quarter, but, but really by the end of the year, we're gonna be back to 12. Like yeah. based on what? Based yeah. on, on, on what? I mean, GDP numbers are coming in light, growth is collapsing, uh, earnings usually follow growth. So it was just amazing to watch. And so look, this summer, I don't know if you've been out and about, but this summer, no one's working. I mean, you and I are working right now, but everyone's on vacation. Everyone is gone. There's no volume in the markets. And when there's low volume in markets, you can get these kind of short squeezy days on perceived good news. So you asked the question about inflation. CPI is kind of a silly number. It's massively lagging. It really doesn't have anything to do with reality. And I'll give you a perfect example. So over the last two years, really over the last you know 18 months or so, uh, the Fed created half of all the dollars in the history of the Republic. 248 oh, yeah. years, they created half. So theoretically, the dollar should have weakened uh, about 50%, okay? And Bitcoin price should have risen 100%. Almost, over the last two years, Bitcoin's up almost exactly 100%. Mm -hmm. And so it reflected all of the inflation that we were gonna see over the past year in real time. So people who look at CPI numbers, they're just, they're looking in the rear view mirror. The road's already turned and they're about to fly off the cliff. Is, is a rate that really has nothing to do with reality in the sense that do you borrow at Fed funds? Do I borrow at Fed funds? Do the listeners right. you know, borrow at Fed funds? No, no one borrows at Fed funds. The only people that borrow at Fed funds are banks. And the Fed funds rate was kept artificially low for a dozen years. Why? Yeah. The Fed has no impact on inflation, right? They, and, and people say, oh, that's ridiculous. Well, it, it's just What's the perceived fact, right? impact? No matter... <laughs> No matter what they do with the Fed funds rate, because the Fed funds rate bought yeah. to reliquify the banks after the global financial crisis. They basically were given free access to money that they could turn around and buy treasuries because no one else wants to buy treasuries because there's too many of them because we're you know spending like drunken sailors in, in DC. And because of that, what they do with interest rates, whether they raise them or lower them, it really isn't going to change inflation. Everybody's going to say, oh, look, you know, Jay Powell broke the back of inflation like, like Volcker. No, he didn't. That decline in inflation has nothing to do with interest rates. It has to do with the fact that oil prices ran unnaturally because the Saudis flooded the market during the lockdown, collapsed the price of oil to negative. Remember, oil price went negative for a few right. hours. Then they rebounded from 40 bucks to 120 bucks. And that shows up as CPI. Well, now oil prices are back under 100. They'll probably be back closer to 60 by the election. And over the whole period, 
oil prices will be unmoved and CPI won't exist. The other part of inflation print was, was used car prices. Raising the Fed funds rate isn't going to change the chip shortage in China. It's not going to change right. the zero COVID policy in China. It's not going to change the price of wheat in Ukraine. It's not going to change the price of natural gas going to uh, Europe from Russia, which is going to be, you know, pardon my French. Although I said that once, Paul, and a French person said, why do you say that? We're not vulgar. I said, I don't know why we say pardon my French. But it's going to be a shit show in the in the fall when, you know, temperatures start to go down and, and they're still buying yeah. Russian gas. So that's a long-winded way of saying what the Fed does really has very little to do with inflation because what we're experiencing is not inflation. It's not demand pull inflation. It's not that we have excess demand and limited supply. It's we devalued the currency. I use housing prices here in North Carolina sure. as the best example. Yeah. Housing prices over the last year went up 40%, four zero in one year. Did my house get bigger? Did it grow? Did it get more efficient? Did it somehow get better? No, it actually wore out. I had to put money into it to keep it at the same level. But what happened is the money that people use to buy houses got devalued because they printed too much of it. And the Fed isn't going to change the number of dollars in the world by changing the Fed funds rate. If the Bank of Japan reserves and you go to 2007, you'd see the same type of, of massive increase. And then they said, no mas. Level off. No yep. more, Level they off. call it QQ, quantitative and qualitative easing. They said, no more. Then look at their balance sheet from 2007 to today. It's more, more. Yep. They are the kings. I mean, Kurodasan, crazy Kurodasan, is the king of weakening the currency. The yen's collapsed. You know, everyone says the dollar's so strong. The dollar's not strong. The dollar is just less weak than the yen and the euro. It's not strong mm -hmm. versus the renminbi. It's not strong versus the ruble. It's not strong versus gold. It's not strong versus Bitcoin. It's just not strong. So it's less weak than these other toilet paper currencies. But Bank of Japan said, we're not going to buy any more bonds. Ha, ha, ha. They've been buying bonds since 2007. We say we're going to reverse that balance sheet. Zero chance. Zero chance. The whole markets, the whole economies collapse if you try to take that funny money, because it really is funny money. I mean, it's money created out of thin air. And part of it is, that's the plan. I mean, I, yeah. I, I hate to say it that starkly, but that has been the plan since 1913. The Fed was created to create inflation. Inflation is a myth, right? Inflation is not good for the average person. Think about it. If inflation increases a couple percent a year over a 25 year period, half yeah. of your purchasing power is destroyed. Gone. Why is that good for you? It's yeah. not. It's really good for the people at the tippy top. And it's why we have the greatest wealth and income inequality in the history of the world. And it's because for better part of a hundred and some odd years, 109 years, the Fed has quietly been stealing the wealth of the masses and siphoning it up to the tippy top. And here's a factoid that no one talks about, actually makes me really angry. In the lockdowns, right, which may have, in, in hindsight, may have been the worst policy decisions global policymakers made in the history of policy, it's a big statement. But in that period, instead of things getting better on this front, three and a half trillion dollars with a T, trillion, three and a half trillion of wealth went from the average person to the elite class, the yeah. owners the super majority owners of these little tiny oligopolies. And that is part of the plan, right? I, I, I actually believe it was the plan all along. And uh, it's kind of crazy that we all cheer for the Fed to you know, bring us this inflation or, or tame inflation. Inflation shouldn't exist. It's, it's not something we should hope for.